Now let's get to the real meat of the matter and the reason you're really watching this video, which is the mega code. So let's go through all the different rhythms you'll need to recognize and what you need to do. Supraventricular tachycardia, high heart rate 182. With tachycardia and with, as we'll see later, bradycardia, the key element to figure out is, is this stable or unstable? A heart rate of 176 is plenty fast, and especially in the older, sicker patient, it's not going to be tolerated too well. Young athlete might be able to take this. So if someone has supraventricular tachycardia, the first thing to do is determine is it stable or unstable. So we talk to the patient, how are you doing? The patient might say, I feel chest pain. That's a sign that things are unstable. I'm dizzy, unstable. I'm short of breath, unstable. You take the vital signs, the blood pressure is low. That's unstable. Symptomatic, chest pain, shortness of breath, confusion. Signs that there's inadequate perfusion. Signs that the patient is in congestive heart failure or getting ischemic from this. And the treatment for a supraventricular tachycardia that is unstable is cardioversion. You go right to cardioversion. This is a good time to take a look at your card, follow down your cards, go through the algorithms. The thing to remember is unstable, you got to do something. Unstable, you have to do something right away because the patient is in a very bad way. Okay. So for supraventricular tachycardia, if it's unstable, you shock them. Now you might say, well, supraventricular tachycardia, it could be sinus, uh, it could be atrial fibrillation, uh, it could be atrial flutter. Well, believe it or not, when it comes to treating them, if they're unstable and it's fast, you shock them. You do cardioversion, synchronous. Remember, cardioversion is synchronous. You do synchronous cardioversion. Doesn't matter if it's AFib, doesn't matter if it's A-flutter, doesn't matter if it's supraventricular tachycardia. You shock them because they are unstable. Now, what if it's stable? What if you have a stable supraventricular tachycardia? And again, whether it's sinus or atrial fib or atrial flutter, believe it or not, doesn't really matter. You get supraventricular, it's, it's a fast heart rate from above the ventricles. If by chance they have a supraventricular tachycardia and it's stable, again, if you look at the card, you'll see where well, you might give adenosine, you might give a calcium channel blocker, you might give a beta blocker. Well, you know what, out in the field, you're not gonna give any of those things. You're just gonna get them to the hospital and let them figure out. Let's review supraventricular tachycardia. If they're unstable, you shock them, cardioversion. If they're stable, you observe, and then you let the experts work out medically how they're gonna get this heart rate down. Next, we're gonna talk about bradycardia. That's a, that's a pretty slow rate. I'll call that pretty slow. You'll recall from the tachycardia discussion that the crucial element in this is, are they symptomatic? Now, I can guarantee you just about anybody with a heart rate of 30, unless they're Lance Armstrong and just finished the Tour de France or something, just about anybody with a heart rate of 30 is gonna be symptomatic. But that's the main thing you have to do. Is it symptomatic? So you ask them, hey, how are you doing there? Assessing the patient. Hey, how are you doing? And if they have bradycardia and they have symptoms, let's go over those symptoms again. Signs of inadequate perfusion somewhere. Basically, symptomatic means signs of inadequate perfusion somewhere. Inadequate perfusion to the head. They're nauseated. They're vomiting. They have mental status changes. They can't talk to you. They can't communicate. They're confused. The heart and lungs, signs of inadequate perfusion would be chest pain, shortness of breath, sitting up gasping for air, signs of congestive heart failure or signs of ischemia. So if you determine that someone is bradycardic, you do what? And again, here's where you want to pull out your little card, test yourself, cover up. There's medical treatment and there is electrical treatment. Electrical treatment for bradycardia is putting the pads on and pacing them from the outside. A thing to remember when you pace somebody is this is uncomfortable. When you put those pads on and you turn up until you get it captured, that is, that is a pretty uncomfortable sen sensation. The other option is to give atropine. The dose listed is atropine 0.5 milligrams, and you can repeat that up to three milligrams. So you could repeat it up to six times. Which is better, atropine or external pacing? The fact is most of us would be more comfortable giving uh, some atropine uh, than external pacing, but both of them are fine. 